And speaking of feeling uncomfortable, <laughs> well, we're at this time that I got to tell you, seeing everything that had happened and has happened to Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby, for what it's worth, from about late 60s to into the 90s, was one of the most well-known, most loved, and most popular comedic actors, stand-ups. He was a legend to many guys who've taken the stage to where we sit now with the one of the biggest and largest falls from grace I can think of. So upon seeing the sentencing, I thought, I'm going to go back several years to the interview that I had with Bill Cosby. And at this time, it's Sportsnet, the Fan 960, where I'm talking to him. But I have no idea what we're going to talk about because he's playing that night. He is playing that night in Calgary. This is one of the most different interviews that I have ever done, and especially at that time, a lot more serious than it usually was. The things that he says in this interview, now you take a look back at it and go, huh, there's a couple of things, and I'll only play a, a, a segment of the interview. I'll put it on Twitter later if you want to hear its uh, interview in its entirety. But this is my interview with Bill Cosby pre-sentencing. Oh, yeah. And we have him, the legend. We finally got a hold of him. It was our fault. You don't want the cause mad at you. He could start throwing Emmys at us, and it wouldn't be finished for a day. Bill Cosby... Right now, how about a little Joe Williams? Hold it right there, baby, please don't go. Hold it right there, baby, please don't go. Only one guy sounds like that, ever, ever. What a way to bring in Bill Cosby. Love it. Good morning, Bill Cosby. Now, let me, let me tell you something. First okay. of all, this is the first, and I mean it, sports talk I've ever Really enjoyed the music. <laughs> Usually, man, you get. <laughs> and he says, oh, man, I'm starting to get the jitters. Let me tell you about Joe Williams. Yes, your, please. Your favorite. I was, we were doing a, a, a benefit at the Pierre Hotel. This is maybe 25 years ago. Now, you you got your Joe Williams there. Hold it right there. And and it's for the NAACP, and the place is packed, and uh, people of all colors and everything, and tuxedos. And, and now the Lord's Prayer will be sung by Joe Williams. <laughs> and he did it without any accompaniment and I said to myself, this guy has range. It was the most wonderful Lord's Prayer. Unexpected, but acapella and notes as clear as can be. And then, the day he died... That day he died, I didn't know he had. I got off the plane in Peterborough. The car came out and 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 got me. And the guy always puts it on eighty eight point one, eighty eight point point three, and I'm listening to Joe Williams and he's singing, "Here's to Life." Mm -hmm. And I didn't know it, but there was an eerie feeling in the car. I'm sitting up front with the driver. Now, the driver knows. And I'm saying to myself, man, this thing. It was the first time I'd heard him do it. I said, this just sounds strong. He said, yeah, he sang it like. Like he knew he was going. I said, well, what do you mean he knew? He said he, he died. He was in the hospital, and he was trying to get home to his wife. Didn't make it. And man, oh, man. So the, your choice, you and I, we're all right, man. Okay, well, that, that, is, that, that is very good. And I think, you know, in terms of 
of those that have it, whatever it that is, whatever, however you want to define it. Uh, I remember as a as a small kid uh, hearing my dad put on the and he had the the jazz albums and 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 strangely enough, I mean drumming was my thing. I mean I played traditional grip jazz drums. That's how I started. And when you hear that, it is just a voice that transcends. You know, just average everyday music. Did I play rock? Absolutely. Was it you know all the stuff the kids did of the time? Absolutely. But there is something very special about the ability that these people have in their phrasing, in that emotion, in the spirit of 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 lyric. It doesn't matter. These people, as you said, you know, take the Lord's Prayer. I mean, there might be some slight pressure to do that properly. And when you have someone special like that, it might be a once in a lifetime thing. Well, properly is. What you have in you to give in the interpretation, it is something you don't want to lose. (laughs) And so many people, you can just see it. It could be in it could be in a two year old child. It's just special. Could be in a in a grown up who's not world renowned or known anywhere it's just when you when you meet them and they talk i remember this this beautiful black woman it was my second time playing this casino in mississippi and i walked i came in the back way to just shake hands with the people and this woman was in a red suit dress and a red hat and this black skin, just with 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 the red bouncing off the lights and hitting the the skin, and and she looked must have been seventy something like that man, and her skin had had the sun line on it on on it, and just beautiful. And I stopped and. And there were people around her, and obviously they were smiling, and they had something to do with I, with, with bringing her there, obviously. And I, and I took her hand, and I looked at her, and she said, Bill Cosby, I've seen you on the TNV, and now I see you nacho. <laughs> and... And that was super, super special, super, super special. So you're you're absolutely correct. If it's with someone who is in sports, playing uh, any soccer, or and I don't mean to be funny, I mean to be uh, serious, curling. Yes, yeah. You know, if they have it. It's special. Now, what, now, let me ask you this, Bill. If that it happens to be, in this case, uh, for the sake of this interview and, and, and how people are listening to this, that it is you. If that it person happens to be the one that you're looking at in the mirror, I would think at times, Bill, that that's not necessarily as easy as people would assume it to be. be because at a young age, as you were finding your way, as you you go through uh, you know the streets of Philadelphia and the Navy and... And uh, your experience at, at, at Temple, which, you know, when I go back as a kid, you know, again, my dad, who was a great uh, collegiate coach and, and a very good teacher, as part of his uh, uh, health and education, he used uh, parts of, uh, you know, your early albums and, yes. and why is there air? He used that yes. in terms of the relationships that you have with your wife and with your children. Yes. And you get to a certain point and people look at you and they and you realize, you know, back in, in the 60s that, that you're it. How does someone react to that? Well, before before I get to it, I have to do what every human being has to do, and that is deal with self-esteem in the area we're going to pursue. And my life, I, I had no idea what my trouble, sadness, And frustration was until I got deeply into into my 60s because um, my father 
uh, had um, brutally used his fists on my mother when I was very, very little. And thank goodness, talking to Alvin F. Poussant, the psychiatrist, I was able to find out what really and truly had kept me from be becoming a uh, a doctor, an engineer, uh, a, 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 a physics professor, a philosopher. It, 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 I just uh, did. I never realized that those days of uh, just it was just two beatings I had seen, but I was small enough that I could not. I couldn't help my mother, and my dislike for him was pressed, and and my sadness in wanting a real father and and admiration for boys who who had a father and then of course when my father left my mother made me the head because I'm first born so this thing of humor i lean towards that for happiness uh wow isn't that something and I believe at that time, he had never told anybody publicly about his father <clears throat> in that story. Wow. Yeah. It, it is almost <clears throat> incomprehensible that someone of, of his stature, what he achieved, the love, the outpouring of love, he was always so well liked. He was loved. And I'm going way back to everything that he ever did early television, late 60s, to where we are now. And so if you want to hear that uh, interview in its entirety, but I just thought uh, for the sake of what we have just seen this past week and being back on the show, that that, that is uh, an interview I'll never forget uh, in a time I think that uh, if you had told me what was coming, I definitely, definitely uh, wouldn't have believed you. <laughs> Just become best friends. Yep. 